You're asked to find the area of the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in a semicircle of radius r. Okay, if there's a way you're trying to connect to an equation somehow to come up with a function. We're talking about semicircles or circles. The equation for a semicircle or circle that we can use. X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals R squared. R is the radius. That's obvious, right? But as a review here, H and K represent your center point for the circle. So we'll use this equation, any given information. We can plug into that. And then it'll help us design a function where apparently with that function, we're trying to focus in on some area stuff. And if we're talking about the area of a rectangle, well, how do I find the area of a rectangle? I'm taking base times height, right? So uh, before we get there, this problem, it might be useful to do a little draw ring. We do a little draw ring. We've got a semicircle. We've got an inscribed rectangle. Now, despite this artistic rendition, this uh, rectangle is supposed to be evenly split there across the y-axis. What I'm doing here on purpose, on purpose, I'm centering my circle at the origin, OK? It just makes sense to do that to keep this situation an easier one, a more manageable one to work with. So. H and K, if I'm centering everything around zero, this equation becomes X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, right? If both of those are zeros, H and K, it's just going to be X squared and Y squared as a result. Now, we don't know what the radius is, so it has to stay as R squared, but now we've got an equation we can play with. Now, with regards to the area, if I try to set up a little function for area, I know the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. The question becomes, what's my base and my height here on this inscribed rectangle the way we've drawn it? Well, we don't know exactly because we don't have numbers to play with, but we do know that on our circle, as we go to various points, we've got ordered pairs of x and y. As I mentioned before, this rectangle is supposed to have some symmetry across the y-axis. So if we went over here, I tried to line up another point. Well, this point, the y-value would be the same as the point over here, right? It's at the same level vertically. The x-value, though, since I'm now on the negative side of the x-axis, would be the opposite distance, right? The opposite distance to whatever this is. So how that marks off dimensions for us? Well, this little piece right here, that little piece would have to have a distance of whatever that number is. And if we're talking about distances over here, I know the points labeled as negative x, but that distance would be an x also, right? As for the vertical side, my vertical side over here would have to be whatever the y value is. So if I'm trying to set up a function based on those dimensions, I would have two x's as my base times y as my height. Now we saw an example of this earlier. We like a function that's in terms of one variable, not two. So as I design this function a little bit better, I'd like to get rid of this y, right? So let's see if we can substitute something in for that y. That's where this other equation comes in handy, right? Take the other equation, solve for y. If you solve for y, you've got y squared equals r squared minus x squared. You take the square root of each side, you've got that plus or minus stuff to worry about plus or minus square root of r squared minus x squared. Now, we need to decide is it plus or is it minus. Since we're talking about a semicircle, and this semicircle is on the positive side, 
of the y-axis, we're going to go with the positive value here. So insert this guy over here. You've got the square root of r squared minus x squared. Now everything is in terms of one variable. I know you're asking yourself this. There's two variables there. There's an r. But r is acting as a constant value, OK? So we will treat it as a constant value throughout the rest of the problem. You're just in terms of x at this point. If we're just in terms of x at this point, we take the derivative of that function. We find a prime of x. We notice how the function is a product. So using the product rule, first part of the product, you had a uh, 2x, right? So derivative is 2. Second part was that square root of r squared minus x squared. You're adding on the 2x times the derivative of the second part. Second part with that root, you bring down the 1 half. Got the quantity of r squared minus x squared inside. Subtract away 1, negative 1 halves the new power. Multiply the derivative of the inside. Derivative of the inside, remember, r squared is just a constant value. It's a number. So that's going to go to 0, meaning negative 2x is your derivative of the inside. Time for cleanup. Take note of where that negative exponent's at. Take note of what's attached to it through multiplication. Create a fraction out of all that. We've been doing this a lot lately. So as I create the fraction, I've got a denominator of 2. And that negative exponent I bump downstairs. So that takes care of these parts, right? As far as what remains, you've got 2x. You've got 1. You've got negative 2x. You can multiply all that together. You've got negative 4x squared. Okay, as you uh, bring along this other part, you've got 2, basically, r squared minus x squared to the 1 half. We're bringing down here, and we know we're adding this on. But we also know we need to create a fraction out of that. So creating a fraction out of this one, denominator needs to be the same as the denominator over here. So copy that over. But at the same time, multiply it to the top, right? Whatever you do the bottom, do the top. Having seen enough of these, hopefully we know what's supposed to happen here in the next step. You create the uh, big fraction overall. You know the denominator. But as you look at what's happening now with this numerator, you start with the easy stuff. You multiply the twos, right? You go to the slightly more complicated looking stuff, being these like bases. Those like bases are the same. So if I multiply them and add their exponents, I get my resulting expression. So when I add these exponents, we know we're doing this correctly if those fractions go away, which they do, right? 1 half plus 1 half, technically power here is 1. And then you bring along the other numerator. So you're one step away from glory at this point, because you'll have your derivative. If you distribute the 4 through, you'd have 4r squared. 4 times negative x squared is negative 4x squared. Join that with the other negative 4x squared. You've got negative 8x squared all over your denominator. So we pause here to uh, take our breath, right? Gather yourselves. And what's the next step? You got your derivative. What do you do next? Look at where it equals 0. There you go. If you look at where it equals 0, by the way, we could have factored this derivative a little bit and canceled out some 2s, but 
I'd be throwing myself a flipping party if I got this far. Okay, we'll leave it as is, it'll still work. Take your numerator, the uh, 4r squared minus 8x squared. Set that equal to zero. You are solving for x. So when you solve for x, you're swinging the uh, 4r squared over. You're dividing by a negative 8. So let's see, divide by the negative 8. Negatives cancel. You get 4 over 8, right? So that's 1 half. Got r squared over 2. It would be negative 4r squared over negative 8. If you reduce, it would be r squared over 2. Take your square root now of each side. Got the whole plus or minus to consider. If you take the square root of this fraction, you're taking the square root of r squared, which is just going to be r. And it's a positive r because it stands for the radius, and that's a distance. All over the square root of 2. Can't do much more than that. We'll leave that root on the bottom because it doesn't matter here in the grand scheme of things. It can't be both plus and minus, so remember what x stands for. x stands for a distance for one of the sides of that rectangle, right? Or at least one of the portions of the side. So we want the positive part here. Man, it's been a lot of work to get here. What the heck are we trying to find anyway? What's the original question? The area. We got to find the area. What was our formula to find the area? It was this guy. It was this function. So what are we going to do with that x? We're going to plug it in there. We're going to find a of a of r over root 2. So if you plug in, it was 2 times x, right? So r over root 2. And it was the square root of r squared minus x. So x, that's r over root 2. We're squaring that. All we got to do is simplify. We got our answer. So a little bit of cleanup involved outside. This would be 2 over 1. Multiply, you got 2r over root 2. Inside here, well, let's see. You've got r squared minus. If you square the r over root 2, you have r squared over. The root would cancel, right? So it would just be 2. Get a common denominator of 2. So that takes us to 2r over root 2 times the square root of it's 2r squared minus r squared, which is r squared, over 2. Take the square root of that fraction. I can feel an end to this problem somewhere. Take the square root of the fraction. You got the square root of r squared, which is r. You got the square root of 2, which is the square root of 2. Multiply all that out. You've got 2r squared across the top over root 2 times root 2, which is 2, meaning the twos cancel out. And your answer after all this for this area is simply the radius squared.